Today I want to share with you something I've learned about standards-based grading over the last few years and something that um, can be called the game of school. Um, some people call it that. Uh, the game of school has, uh, has many moves. One of the opening moves is this question that I hear quite often, way too often. Did I miss anything important? Well, uh, did, uh, maybe it was this. Maybe you missed this. Or this. I think those are important. Oh, but, but this. Now this is really important. And what I found is that students have become fixated on filling out papers and getting grades. And that's the opening move of the game of school. The game of school has other moves, too, like, what can I do for extra credit? hear that one a lot. Uh, you know, we throw carrots out there. That's the carrot. But then we have sticks, like the late grade. Or the ultimate, the ultimate stick, the zero. Uh, I believe that we can end the game and increase success by using standards-based grading and help more students succeed in school. So what this really means is connecting a learning target, a standard, with every grade. Every grade is connected to a standard. We used to call them behavioral objectives. Today we call them learning targets, and we put an I can in front of them. Same thing, really. And I've been using them for my whole career, but only in the last couple of years have I come to the realization that maybe every grade I put in the grade book needs to, be, needs to have one of these associated with it no matter what it is. So with the, um, every lab that we do, um, every activity, whatever, it's always going to be connected to one of these learning targets. So with the help of uh, Robert Marzano and uh, Rick Wormelli, uh, over the last year I've come up with a plan uh, that involves the following. Um, Four-point scale, which minimizes the effect of the zero. Formative assessment, helping the students know what they need to do to succeed. Every uh, assessment involves telling the students what, what they need to do better. Flexible formative grades, which means that grades can be upgraded at any time. Uh, just prove to me that you can meet the target and we'll raise the grade. Collaboratively written rubrics. Uh, the students help me write the rubrics that allow them to know exactly what it takes to get a four. And summative exams. Once we've spent all the time going over everything and everybody's prepared, uh, it's a higher weighted grade for the summative exam. Now, I have a little data here over the last few years. Uh, at the very least, I can say that this has affected my bottom line, okay? That bottom line. Here's a very strange distribution from a few years ago. I picked it random. And here's one from this year. Here's one that looks a little more normal, if you can call it that. And here's another one from this year. I think it's a dramatic improvement, at least in this bottom line. What I try to tell the students is show me what you know and I will assess it. That's my message to them. Use any method you want. Show me what you know and I will assess it. I will help you learn. And what I try to tell parents is, what can I do to help your student learn this? In IEPs, in CSTs, and whatever, this is now the message. Whereas the message used to be this. Your kid does not turn in work. Over and over and over again, for years and years and years. And this is no longer an issue, because I can assess every student, regardless of whether that paper got lost or not. So this one's no more. But by far the biggest, I think, uh, maybe a sign of the influence this can have on my students came from a young man this year who, uh, after the first quarter, uh, came up to me and, and told me this. I, cannot, I can't believe I'm not failing. 
obviously a student who was really uh, used to the game of school on the negative side. And my only response was simply, I can. Thank you.